we've arrived at our final example here. This is um, the last circuit dealing with mesh analysis. And here we have taken the current source that was formerly uh, out here at the 150, in place of the 150 volt source. And we have uh, instead moved it to an inside branch. And what's different about this circuit is that whereas previously the current source, let me show you here, um, the 10 amp current source was um, in just mesh one, okay, and did not affect mesh two. Now we have this current that is basically involved both in mesh one and the mesh two current paths. So how do we deal with that? Well, um, if we try to walk around um, the mesh one loop, let's say we'll start in the bottom left corner here and we start walking around. When we get to this current source right here, we're not going to be able to define the voltage across it. And yet we can't say that I1 is just equal to minus 2 amps. Uh, that would only be the case if that current source was on the outside like it was in the previous example. So we can't walk around that loop. And if we try to walk around mesh 2 like this, we're going to encounter the same current source and we can't express the voltage across it. And so um, the only path that we can take is actually a path that will actually surround, well it's a combination uh, of the two meshes and we call this a super mesh. And before we do that, let's think about uh, how the current source here actually constrains the problem. Every time, like a nodal analysis, every time we added a voltage source, um, we found that it actually constrained the node voltages so as to simplify the set of equations that we had to solve. In the last example, the one where we had the current source at the output or on the outer leg, uh, here, just participating in mesh one, we found that uh, it simplified our two equation two unknown system to a one equation one unknown because I1 was in fact already decided for us, being 10 amps. Now we have a constraint, but it's not that either I1 or I2 is equal to two amps, but instead we can say that the current flowing Let's say the current flowing up through, let me use a different color, this current flowing up here, that current is going to be equal to I2 minus I1. I'm just doing the superposition of those two currents using their sign convention there. So I2 minus I1 is the current pointing up, and that is the current that is flowing through that current source. And so it must be equal to 2 amps. This is our constraining equation. Okay, this is just like if I go back to um, a nodal analysis right here, we had a constraining equation that said that, here it is, it's expressed here, that basically V3 minus V1 is equal to 10 volts. Well, here we have a similar situation, but with currents. Okay. So this problem actually is quite simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do one super mesh. So whenever you have, um, whenever there's a current source that's involved in a mesh, you take an alternate. If it's if that current source completely defines that mesh current is not shared with any other uh, mesh, then you're done, it's just like in the last problem, you just say I1 is equal to that current or minus that current. But if that current source is placed between two meshes, then you have to define a super mesh and write one KVL equation that goes around uh, the combination of those two meshes. So let's do that now. We're going to start in the bottom left corner again, and we'll have minus 150 volts. And then we will have plus 20 ohms times I1. And then we're going to keep going this way. We'll encounter the 15 ohms, and that will have a current I2, and then finally a voltage 100 volts. 
and that's equal to zero. Next, because this equation is in I1 and I2, and let's say we wanted to solve for I1, we would take our constraining equation and rearrange it so that we can express I2 in terms of this two amps and I1. And we will now plug that in to our one KVL equation. So we will have 20 ohms times I1 plus uh, that would be 30 volts, because 15 times 2 amps, plus 15 ohms times I1 is equal to, and now I'm going to bring the 150 over and the 100 over, and let's bring the 30 over as well. So now we have 35 ohms times I1 is equal to 20 volts, and I1 then is equal to 4 sevenths of an amp if I have not made an arithmetic mistake. So again, um, if you have, let's let me draw another circuit here just as an example. Okay, so you would have, and this is a voltage source here. So initially we'd say, well, we have a mesh here, we have a mesh here, and we have a mesh here. But because of this current source that is shared between those two, um, those two meshes, we'll call this mesh one, mesh two, mesh three. Because of that, we're going to instead just define one super mesh and I'll call this M12. And so what we'll end up doing is we will write um, we will write KVL around M3 and we'll write a KVL equation around the super mesh which I'll call M12. And um, there will be three currents associated with this. But So we'll have two equations. Uh, initially this would be if I call M1, if this is I1 current and there's an I2 current here and an I3 current, then this first mesh equation will be in terms of those three currents. The second, the super mesh equation, will also be in terms of those three, but if I call this Ix here, the source, I would say that Ix constrains I1 and I2 such that Ix is equal to I2 minus I1. And so I can uh, I can either treat these as one, two, three equations and my three current unknowns, or like we did before, we can just go ahead and take the third, the constraining equation, solve for either I1 or I2, let's say for I2, which would then give us Ix plus I1, and we could take I2 and plug that back in to our two KVL equations, resulting now in just two unknowns and two KVL equations that we would then solve. So that's the approach for dealing with a super mesh uh, when you have a current source that is uh, shared between two meshes. And this, this uh, process would work the same if instead of being an independent current source, it was a dependent source, uh, you'd use the same method.